how digital analog, or I'm sorry, how digital audio works. What is digital audio? Uh, people ask me all the time uh, because they, I listen to vinyl and don't have a lot of CDs. I have a lot more vinyl, uh, but I do have MP3s because I like the portability of, of digital audio. Uh, because I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily want to have a uh, turntable strapped to my back while I'm mowing the lawn. But um, when I'm sitting in the uh, you know, living room or wherever, and I want to actually hear the full, uh, new, you know, all the nuances of the actual of the recording. You know, I want to hear everything. I want it to sound good. I don't want to listen to a digital representation of it. I, I want to hear the real thing. And analog audio, uh, a lot of people argue, including myself, that uh, has a much warmer sound. And a lot of artists, um, I know Eric Clapton, I read a story about, I don't know how true it is because I don't know Eric, or I should say Mr. Clapton. Uh, I don't know him personally, but I've read a story about how he and a few other artists have refitted their home studios with all digital equipment and then turned around and threw it all out and you know, went and bought, uh, or either hooked up or went and bought you know analog equipment again because they just didn't like the sound of it. Um, Keen, if you know this, the, the group Keen, um, they recorded their stuff all digital um, as well as do 90% of the other musicians out there. Um, Donald Fagg and the Nightfly was one of the, f one of the first uh, albums recorded fully digital. And oddly enough, it sounds incredible. Um, the, the machine they used was a little bit different than what they use today. Uh, but uh, it's that, that album, especially IGY, is used for you know, p people who are setting up sound equipment and they need to um, you know, check the, the, the acoustics of the hall. They use that song because it has you know, such a wide range of frequencies and it's recorded and mixed so well. Um, but here's the deal. I'm just going to show you how... Uh, what digital audio is now works. Now I put another video up on how to count digital and what exactly is digital, so I'm not going to recap that. In analog, you have a sine wave, and even if you were to take a speaker, stick it next to, let's say, a bowl of water or a pool, and you pumped a lot of bass for that speaker, you would actually see, you know, uh, the, an actual sine wave in the water because that's that's what a speaker does. You know, a speaker moves in and a speaker moves out, or I'm sorry, a speaker moves in and a speaker moves out, and it has a center resting place because it's creating waves in the air and our eardrums pick up on that and our brains you know turn that into sound um, really that's it's that simple I mean there's there's much more to it uh, but that's pretty much it and I'll just show you some practical things here yeah all right so that's an oscilloscope that's playing music I don't know what song it is let's find out Alright, YouTube doesn't really like a lot of music in their videos, but uh, without being licensed, whatever. But that's uh, that song being played through the oscilloscope. You notice there's a sort of a wave, sine wave showing up, but it's kind of garbled and all kinds of craziness going on. And that's essentially what you're hearing. Um, that's what's flowing through the air. That's That right there is sound. That's music. And I can it's not as flickery in real life but that's just the way the oscilloscope works and you see now when it turns into when it starts doing that kind of thing that's bass all these little things are treble they're high high frequencies and we're zooming in a little bit and you can see even more Now, this center line here, right here, I'll show you. This center line is neutral. It's negative, or not negative, it's neutral. It's nothing, zero. Anything above it is positive, anything below it is negative. So let's go for something a little bit simpler. So that's music. Let's go to. Um, 
Let's go to just a simple tone. All right, this is a, a sweep. Okay, let me hook up the speaker. All right, so the closer that these get together, the higher the frequency. The further apart, the lower the frequency. That's why people that have, you know, that drive past your house with booming subwoofers, and you think, how the hell could they drive around with that booming in their car when it's ready to blow the windows out of my house? Well, it's because they don't hear it in the car. They might feel it, but they don't necessarily hear it. For this oscillation to actually happen, it, it may take, I don't know, 10, 20 yards for that low of a frequency to, you know, oscillate. It's to the point where you actually can hear it. Um, this is, I'm doing a sweep on the tone generator. So it's going low frequency, high frequency. And again, this is neutral, above, below. So if this were, you know, this is where the speaker starts here, moves out, comes out, moves in, comes out. Up, out, in, out, in. And this is what it sounds like. See? Easy. Now, the, the cats are going nuts. They hate this sound. I'm going to turn it down and you're going to see the waveform gets smaller, the waveform gets larger, depending on the volume. Now one thing you saw, see how it's clipping? Whenever you turn the stereo up so loud that this, it starts getting distorted, see the waveform is kind of squaring off? It's meeting its maximum point. It can't go any higher. So when that's round, it just chops off because it can't go any higher. So that's when somebody says it's clipping, that's what that means. But you're clipping the top of the sine wave off. Okay, let's turn this off. I know my cat's here going nuts. She just got down. All right. So we have that. Now, how does that work in digital audio? Well, here's your waveform. This is a very basic waveform, very basic sine wave. All it does is it makes samples. From left to right is your sample rate. This here, the top and bottom, is your bit rate. Meaning how loud can it get and how soft can it get? And as you saw in the oscilloscope, there's little lines, and you can think of those as, you know, we'll say that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so on. It, you know, in real life, it's you know, much higher than that. But just for this, you know, example, this is what we're going to use. And it goes across. Okay. So what it does is it says, it takes, you know, digital, it takes samples. And how many times a second it does that is your sample rate. And it'll go, you know, it will basically log numbers. And it says at this point in time, this is where the waveform is. At this point in time, this is where the waveform is. And you can think of this as not being solid, but, you know, if you were to take the line away, you would just have a dot moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it records the location, essentially, of that dot. And if you don't understand what I mean, here I'll show you. Now, you notice that... Let me ground this out there. You notice that that's a line. It's not really, though. I'm going to slow it down. That's actually what you're seeing. 